identify yourself and the agency that you're with. And who would like the first question for Ashton? We're going to stay with our gentleman with the red shirt to the right, fourth row. Kenzie Gibbs with Locked On ACC. Uh, Ashton, you're known as a defensive lineman that's a ball of energy and, and an extremely explosive first step. But in watching your film, I see so much more than that. So can you kind of break down what goes into developing a pass rush plan for you? Is this something that like you go into the game with certain things that you want to do? Or is it a play-by-play -play adjustment based on what you're seeing? And also beyond that, is there a player that you model your game after um, in terms of how you approach the game? So week by week, I mean, you study your opponent. So your, your pass rush plan is always going to be different. You're going to break down different opponents different ways. So um, something I like to look at is hand placement, where a tackle is putting his hands, uh, what moves first, uh, how far back his foot is. That, those are things that you can do to get a jump on another lineman. Um, so a bit of it is beforehand, but in, in the moment, you have to prepare play by play. Like, if I'm doing this move, uh, I set it up, now I can do a, like a spin off of it, something, something like that. Um, and in my modeling of a, of a game, I, I really try to watch Von Miller a lot. I like Von Miller as, a, as an edge rusher. Um, Max Crosby is a good one. Um, George Karloftis, that's someone who played under uh, my current coach, and you know he's he's been great to learn from. So, other questions from the room for Ashton. Ash, I'll ask one from the podium here. It's sort of a follow-up to what you were just asked. You've been pretty steady your first two years. There seems to be another gear in you for this season. How is it that you're going to find that next level of your game? I think it comes down to preparation and mental preparedness. Um, the physical aspects are something that everyone thinks about, uh, how to get faster, how to be stronger. But I think, uh, especially this year, going into the season, um, I've taken a lot of steps to mentally prepare myself to be in these situations, whether it's uh, opponent prep or uh, just watching NFL guys, just seeing how they work. Um, that's really what separates NFL players besides athletics. It's their understanding of the game. So trying to modeling, try to model ap after them and uh, build on top of that. Other questions for Ashton from the floor? We'll go back to our gentleman to the right. In terms of uh, year to year in college, we all know that, you know, a player's bodies change a lot based on their goals and based on what they want to be better at, what they want to work on and all that, especially as an edge rusher and all that good stuff. So in what ways have you worked to change your body this offseason? Has it been body comp? Has it been getting bigger? Has it been getting more lean? What in particular have you uh, worked on in terms of, you know, that, that strength aspect that you talked yeah. about in terms of getting your body better and getting your athletic, most of your natural athleticism? Um, so I think in the last game, it rewarded me to be bigger. So I was playing around 275. Um, considering the new scheme, I'm a true edge. So I, I've, I've been uh, leaning out, per se. So trying to drop body comp, uh, body fat, and uh, playing down to around 265. Just to, just to get your body feeling better, to be on the edge, get faster. Um, those kind of things go into it. Um, that's really about it. Ashton, your last question for the podium. You were a tight end in high school. Yes, sir. How much did playing tight end in high school help you now on the defensive side of the ball in college? I think playing a tight end in high school uh, helped me in the way that I understand what offenses are looking for when they're playing a tight end over a, a defensive end. You know, obviously I was involved in a lot of blocking, uh, a couple of slip routes. So um, being, a, being a tight end and being tight end minded, it allows you to know what they're trying to do. If they're split out a little bit, you can, they're trying to probably seal you. So little things like that, that can give you an advantage over a tight end. Because especially this year, I'm in a lot of tight end matchups. So um, I think that's just. I think that works. Yeah. Thank you, Ashton. You can switch places with Brian Hudson. Spend some time with our offensive lineman from Georgetown, Kentucky. About five minutes with him. And who would like the first question for Brian? Brian, we're going to go left side towards the wall, about seventh row. 
Hey, Brian, David Hood with TigerNet.com. When we talk about two sport athletes in college, it's usually football and baseball or something else. But track and field, how does participating in the discus and, and the shot put help you with your footwork on the offensive line? Because those are both technique oriented sports or you know positions and it's all about footwork there as well. Right, yeah, they, there's a big correlation between the two. Like you said, a big thing is the footwork. Uh, in, in track and field, especially in shot putting discus, I mean, you have to find a way to throw, you know, a 16 pound ball as far as you can just within a seven and a half foot circle. So having that footwork, the balance, the, you know, being able to kind of build on your athleticism. Um, and it's very technique oriented, like you mentioned, uh, just like the O-line play and, uh, and on the football aspect, uh, side of it. So um, the two go hand in hand in the weight room. They're very similar athletes, uh, being a thrower and an offensive lineman. So just being very explosive, very powerful, being strong and, you know, strong and very powerful in the unnatural and un uncomfortable positions uh, is a big part of it too. And just being able to, like I said, build on your athleticism. So the two definitely go hand in hand and, and track and field has helped me tremendously, especially early on in development and even right now with uh, football. Brian, I do want to follow that up for the podium. You still hold the state 3A record for the shot put, 63 feet, nine and a half inches. What's the key in getting that pellet 63 feet down the field? <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it. Um, like I said, the, it's a lot very similar to playing offensive line. You know, it's it all starts from the ground up. Uh, just you know, being able to have that uh, explosiveness from the hips and just being able to hit the right positions and uh, have that leverage on the ball. Just like offensive line, you need leverage on your on the D line and the, the defensive opponent. So um, a, a lot goes into it, but. Um, you know, it's just having, being able to ha be explosive and be powerful and be very accurate with the positions that you hit to be able to, to have be success success successful with it. Thank you. Back to the right side, fourth row, red shirt. Um, Brian, you were a player who was a leader on this offensive line uh, during the 2021 season when, you know, you all were one of the better units in the country, quite frankly. And last year, the offensive line seemed to take a little bit of a step back uh, for whatever reason. So what is it that you personally are looking forward to in leading this team and, and leading that unit into becoming the, the you know, top 25% uh, or higher of every pretty much grading statistic, of every rushing statistic, of every, um, you know, time allowed per pass statistic? What goes into getting that offensive line performance back to that level um, in this upcoming season? Yeah, I think a big, it all starts with the preparation. You know, we, we've, like you all mentioned, and what's been talked about, we've brought in a lot of new guys, even into the O-line room, uh, even this summer. So there's several new faces, a lot of guys with a lot of experience, both newcomers and returners that have played a lot of ball. So that's a big plus. It makes a, a, my job a little bit easier, you know, being the center and being uh, in more of a leadership role that, you know, the guys, that they don't need uh, you know, to be babysat or anything like that. They all have that motor, they all have that motive and commitment level that uh, is required to, to you know, accomplish that as an offensive line. So um, just be, going through that preparation, lear learning this playbook, new playbook that we have, and really being able to um, process that with movement, process that against all the different fronts that we're gonna take, uh, be up against this season. And, but yeah, it just starts with preparation and getting in the film room, and uh, along with that, just the on the field work, staying after extra, after workouts, staying after extra, after uh, the practices that we had this summer, and then now going into fall camp has been huge for us. And I think we have all the potential that, uh, you know, the sky's the limit, I think, for this offensive line as well as for this team. Uh, like I said, we have a lot of new faces, and, and we have a lot of talent, a lot of athletic uh, linemen in the room. So. Adapting the new system has made that a little bit easier, just having those athletes. And, uh, but I'm looking forward to see what we can do with all the potential. Brian, thank you. You can switch places with Mr. Jordan. And we'll have about five minutes with Jahar. Our running back from Long Island, New York. Who would like the first question for our running back? We're gonna go right side, probably about the sixth row, maybe fifth row. Hi, Ashlyn Dotson from Spectacular Magazine. So as Louisville's leading rusher last season, 
How do you think your ability to run the football will complement your new responsibility as a pass catcher? Uh, with Brahms, offense is giving me the opportunity to showcase my versatility as a running back. You know, with the game evolving, you want to be able to do multiple things. So with this offense, I'm able to catch the ball and hopefully I can uh, match uh, the way I run the ball with catching the ball as well. Got a question. It'll be to our right side, fourth row. In terms of your career so far, your first three years saw limited touches, limited action and all that, and then last year saw an immense jump where you had more yards from scrimmage than you had in your entire career combined before that point. What led to that jump? Was it simply a matter of getting the opportunity? Was it the game slowing down for you? Was it anything in particular that led to it? Or what, what caused that? Yeah, definitely it was just uh, preparing for the opportunity, waiting on the opportunity, and staying mentally ready for the opportunity. And uh, I just kept working and just stayed patient. And eventually it came, so I just made the best of my opportunity. Jahar, a question from here at the podium. A lot of people are amazed year after year that kick returners perform at the high level that they do. What is it about practice? What is it about preparation when it comes to kick returning that's made you so good the last two years? Really, I just got to give credit to the guys that blocked for me. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Maz and last year our special teams coach, he gave us a game plan. Uh, we followed it and we just executed it. I just do the easy part for real. It's the easy part. Question to our left, if we can get the microphone to about the fourth row here on the edge where we see the camera set up. Leverkate TCFB Nation. Uh, Jawar, uh, running backs of smaller stature have always had that stigma that they can't run between the tackles. But you, mm -hmm. in fact, had over 467 yards after contact. Can you expound on that stigma of running backs not being able, smaller running backs not being able to run through the tackles when you actually prove that it can be done? Really, it's just a matter of respect of the game. I, I know this game is physical, and I respect that, and uh, I take that serious. And just proving people wrong, is, uh, I'm big on that. So that's why I just run uh, with heart. So. Any other questions for our running back from the floor before I ask the last one from the podium? Mr. Jordan, a uh, popular question to ask, do you have to win a championship in order to call it a successful season? No, sir. Uh, I believe uh, a step forward is uh, successful. So we had seven games or seven wins uh, in the regular season. So just a step forward will make it a, su a successful season. Louisville, thank you. Good luck this season. Thank you. Folks, Georgia Tech is up next.